Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you for everything you do for us. Love you. Happy Father's Day to our dad, Poppy, Chad, and to you, Keith. Happy Father's Day. Hope you have a good day. Bye. Love you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. You are awesome. Okay. Happy Father's Day, Biba, Grandpa, Bumpy, and Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I love you. Greetings, friends, from the sanctuary of St. Matthew Wesley United Church in North Sydney, Nova Scotia. Reverend Stephen joining you for this third Sunday in the Pentecost season. I'm delighted today to also be sharing this message with folks of the Waterview Pastoral Church, members, adherents, and friends of United Church Communities of Faith in Marion Bridge, Gabarus Lake, and Forshu. And of course, we welcome anyone from anywhere who happens upon this worship service. We pray it will be a blessing to all. Finally, before we turn to our message, I send happy Father's Day wishes to all fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and anyone who takes up the challenging role of being a parent. Your efforts are appreciated, not only today, but all through the year, because anyone who's fulfilled this role knows it never ends. We note also that this is a National Indigenous Day of Prayer, and we ask for a blessing on all our First Nations folks. Let us now pray. Loving and generous God, in these words, may we find your word of everlasting and abundant life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior and friend. Amen. A reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 29, verses 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. There may be other things happening in the world right now. But one could be forgiven for believing that all that is going on is the abiding pandemic and global action against racial inequality. The major stories in newspapers, television, radio, and online sources are indeed focused on our continual engagement with the COVID-19 virus locally and worldwide, and with efforts in the United States and in every nation to draw attention to decades of racism that has threatened and diminished the lives of black people. The current crisis did not, we know, appear out of nowhere and with no explanation. The COVID virus has some unique and disturbing characteristics, but scientists and public health agencies have been predicting the appearance of a potent infectious disease for decades. They have been urging governments to prepare. Needless to say, 
few were prepared and lives have needlessly been lost. Likewise, the public protests over racial injustice and police brutality are familiar to anyone who knows American history. There is a tradition of taking to the streets to draw attention to the plight of the victims of racism, and unfortunately a tradition of empty promises of doing something significant to address the problem. Scripture for this third Pentecost Sunday reminds us that our faith has something crucial to say about these and other dilemmas that we face. This claim may surprise some folks who look on religion as otherworldly or future focused. Neither could be further from the truth. Old Testament literature is firmly rooted in the real lives of the Jewish people. The New Testament is a record of God literally becoming a human being. And as a man diving into the lives, the hopes and the destinies of all people, forging a link to the divine. What do these testaments testify to that might offer a way to regard our current challenges? I suggest our religion matters because it addresses the worth of each person. It is grounded in the belief that every person is of value and is to be valued. Now, if you ask if this is the perspective of those formulating COVID-19 strategies or those agonizing over racism, we must sadly say no. When the rallying cry is Black Lives Matter, it means that for too long, Black lives haven't mattered to people in power and to a wider white society. When the overwhelming deaths from the pandemic are among people of color, the elderly and the ill. We know a decision was made that some lives, the young and the wealthy, matter more than others. Our Christian witness is the declaration of God that creation, including every person created, is good. And the gospel of Christ, good news to the poor, is that in the eyes of God, you are worthy and to be treated as worthy by each other. The text from Matthew says it plainly, God knows the number of hairs on your head and loves you eternally and unconditionally. And that's how you are to love each other. Friends, our faith doesn't remove us or protect us from the world's woes. It plunges us right into the middle of the terrible mess that is human life together. But it does not do so without promise and power. The promise is that God in Christ and the Holy Spirit are with us to strengthen us in times of trial and to magnify all the good that we are able to do. You may choose to march in the streets. You may sign petitions and write letters. You may financially support organizations working for justice. Thank you. Or you may simply treat everyone you meet with respect and kindness and never stop praying that God's kingdom will come. Thank you for that faithful witness as well. This is indeed God's wondrous world. You create the wonder when you bring the Christ to others in word and in deed. Friends, keep the faith. Let us pray. Father in heaven, divine parent of all, open our eyes and hearts to the worth of every person, including ourselves, that we may walk the path of service and sacrifice pioneered by Jesus, our friend. Our worship continues now with the Ministry of Music from Angela, Keith and Francis. Thank you to them and to everyone who has prepared and participated in our worship today. Blessing friends on the week ahead and goodbye for now.